Good morning. Thank you for tuning in today to hear us speak about our clinical practice update on alpha-gal syndrome for the GI clinician. My name is Jana Hashash, and I'm one of the gastroenterologists with a, a specialty in inflammatory bowel disease from the Mayo Clinic in Florida. And my co-authors were Dr. Sarah McGill from the Division of Gastroenterology at the University of North Carolina, and Dr. Thomas Platts-Mills from the Division of Allergy and Clinical Immunology from the University of Virginia. And I'm very lucky to be accompanied by my co-author, Dr. Sarah McGill, uh, today. So Dr. McGill, can you tell us a little more about alpha-gal syndrome? Sure, Jan. Alpha-gal syndrome is a delayed reaction to mammalian meat, and it's an allergy that's transmitted with a bite of a tick. Very nice. And so if someone does not have a tick bite, does that mean that you can exclude alpha-gal syndrome? Well, well patients um, may not remember their tick bite. We think that in the United States, that is the way it's transmitted. I see. And can you please tell us what symptoms your patients may have? Right. So GI symptoms are predominantly abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea and vomiting. Um, patients with alpha-gal syndrome can have recurrent skin reactions and more rarely anaphylaxis. I see. So a lot of times patients may see their allergists or gastroenterologists with several complaints. I believe what's important to highlight is also there's patients who strictly have GI symptoms such as abdominal pain, diarrhea, et cetera. So how do you approach these patients in your clinic? Is there a confirmatory test that you need to get? You got it. So so we screen for alpha-gal um, IgE, which is a blood test, but among those patients, people with the syndrome should get better on a mammalian meat-free and a mammalian product-free elimination diet, which um, should last about a couple of months. I see. So this is a diet that you prescribe for your patients for life to avoid mammalian products. That's right. Al Alpha gal is in mammalian meat. Um, it's in mammalian products like, like lard, and it's in gelatin and dairy. For the elimination diet, for the diagnosis, um, it's probably best to exclude all of those. But later, a lot of patients with the syndrome actually can tolerate small amounts of mammalian, of, uh, mammalian products like dairy. So initially, if people avoid mammalian products, are they in the safe zone? Right, they're generally in the safe zone, although um, this alpha-gal can be in medications like the infusion drug cetuximab. And of course, there is a lot of alpha-gal in um, pig products like implantable pig valves. So people with the syndrome should watch out for that as well. Thank you, Dr. McGill. So if interested to learn more about alpha-gal syndrome, please uh, check out our manuscript in Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology that will be published this month. Thank you.